the DB program that we're going to be talking about today um, is one that addresses the FTA's uh, program. Now, the DBE program has been with us for over 25 years. Uh, back in 1987, uh, Congress enacted legislation to really focus on contracting opportunities for minority and women businesses. So it's been around for a while. Now, there's three operating agencies under the DOT that utilize the DBE program. And I was sitting in the audience here earlier and I saw the individual next to me with the PAC org chart with all the PAC members and all the goals and small business goals and WBE goals and California DGS goals. So it can become quite confusing in terms of you know, what program you're under, what goals are applicable and so forth. This is very straightforward for this program. The, the DBE program that we've implemented for this project falls under the DOT, the US DOT's program. And the DOT has those three operating units, the FTA, Federal Transit Administration, the Federal Highway Administration, or FHWA, and that here in California is administered through Caltrans, and then finally the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration. Those are the three operating units that really have DBE programs, and then they're pushed down to the states and pushed down to uh, regional and local agencies such as Sandan. So today, the, de the, uh, the DBE program um, that we're talking about is one that's funded through the FTA funds that we're expecting to receive on the Midcoast project. Sandag has implemented the DBE program and, and about uh, three years ago they went through a, a disparity study and as a result of that disparity study they came up with their specific DBE program that addresses specific goals and both the uh, uh, race neutral and race conscious uh, measures. So with that I want to explain something that it is what somewhat of an anomaly here for Sandeg in terms of its DBE program. Sandeg uses five of the six socially and uh, socially um, and economically disadvantaged individual groups. So you can see here we have African American, Hispanic American, Native American, subcontinent, Asian American, and women. Now the group that's missing from the FTA UDBE program is the Pacific Asian American. However, that group is included as part of the race neutral program and part of our overall goal, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. This is different from Caltrans's DBE program. Currently, Caltrans has a DBE program that includes all six groups, and I, I believe it's an overall goal of 12.5%, with 9.5% 9, 9 of that goal going towards the race conscious component. In addition to the DBE program, uh, I'm sorry, the DB goals, we also have a small business component to that program. And what that means is back in uh, February 2012, the DOT changed the rules to require that any of the recipients of these federal funds incorporate into their DBE program document a small business component. In other words, we need to also focus on fostering the participation of small businesses. These are businesses that are not certified under the DBE program to also participate in federally funded projects. So as of 2012, Sandeg has also incorporated that requirement into their DB program, and it's important that, uh, and this is all for everyone here today, but especially for those primes that are out there, the potential primes that are out there looking at this project, is that we also focus on an overall expectation of 15 to 20 percent of the work that's available. Now, you heard John talk about um, a lot of different trades in a lot of different areas, um, and you heard um, Chairman uh, Dale also talk about the uh, importance of small businesses, not only for his votes, but also to Sandeg. Very important that we um, focus on that. And the expectation is that we reach a 15 to 20 percent target for small businesses, which include the DBE uh, firms as well. Now, just give you a graphic, overall graphic representation of the DBE program and the goals here for the Midcoast uh, project. Now, John uh, spoke about uh, three projects. We talked about the Midcoast uh, quarter uh, transit project, talked about uh, two of the bridge projects, both the uh, San Diego River Bridge and the uh, uh, was Elvira, Elvira to uh, Marina uh, double track. So those two, those three projects, mm -hmm. all three of those are going to be uh, looked at today, going to be part of the overall Midcoast RFP. 
the overall project goal for the Mid-Coast project is 11.3%. That 11.3%, as you heard uh, several individuals say, is approximately $150 million. And, and I looked at the, the timeline that uh, John had talked about, and we're looking at approximately four years uh, of work. Um, the good news about that 11.3% is that unlike a traditional construction contract where you have you know, a hard dollar bid and you really need to go out and find your, your small businesses and DB firms at a certain point in time, with the CMGC delivery method, we have a broader window of opportunity for all of you uh, DBEs and small businesses. Now, how this will work is essentially, uh, again, John talked about the pre-construction component um, and the construction component. The, the Mid-Coast project itself will have multiple construction goals. And I'll show, share that with you here in a couple of slides. So this, uh, depending on how the, uh, the prime uh, CMGC contractor moves forward with bid packages, we'll be looking at establishing various goals to address those phases or bid packages. So here, here's an example of, I want to make sure I have this, um, of one of the differences with this CMGC project is that unlike a classic traditional construction contract, a CMGC contract similar to a design build contract requires good faith effort throughout the entire performance. So what happens is, as a result of that, we're going to make sure that the good faith effort requirements are, we're going to make sure that they're exercised in the pre-construction phase in the, and then with every construction packet as we go out with construction packets. So a very different, uh, dis, uh, di very different from a uh, traditional construction contract. Now, a couple of things I want to make clear. Um, there, we talked about the two phases. We have a construction, pre-construction phase and the construction phase. In addition to that, we have three projects, three separate projects. Mid-Coast Corridor Transit Project, again, San Diego River, and then the Elvira to Moreno Double Track Project. So to, to be, be, I, uh, I think this will better explain this process. This is uh, essentially the goals that we've established for the project. Now, I want to just make it clear here that up here on the two dark green columns, you'll see pre-construction and construction. And, and to the left side, on the left column, you'll see the three projects. And you can see that we've established a three and a half percent pre-construction goal for Mid-Coast, 3.2 percent pre-construction goal for San Diego River, and the same goal, 3.2 percent for the Elvira to Moreno double track. Now, these are all UDBE goals. Those are goals that address those five groups that I talked about earlier. For the construction goals, we have a 10.2% overall goal, and I'm going to talk, I'm going to come back to that here in a minute, but we also have an 8.3% construction goal for the San Diego River project and a 6.1% construction goal for the Elvira to Morena double track. Now, this 10.2% goal is essentially an overall construction goal, meaning that when these construction packets come out, the actual goals will be placed on those bid packets. So when you look at this 11.3, a lot of people look at this and say, how does this add up to 11.3? Well, first of all, most of the work is in construction. And when you look at the weighting of these two, it, trust me, we've done, the, we've done the analysis, we've done the math, it, it adds up to 11.3. The 11.3 also includes the race neutral component. So in other words, if, if a contractor, which we expect, will, will go over the goal, let's say instead of coming in at 10.2, they came in at 10.5 the extra 0.3% will be counted toward the race neutral component of that. Now, in addition to the goal, we also have a subcontracting plan. Some of you may have heard of these plans before on design build, many times they're called uh, performance plans. Uh, but the subcontracting plan is a very important element here and it'll allow the CMGC contractor and Sanday to essentially work together stay on course and ensure that all of the DBE program requirements are met throughout performance. I've included a couple of examples of the elements that are in the RFP um, to describe some of the uh, subcontracting plan requirements. For example, in the introduction, we have a requirement that a DBE program manager or a, a DBE person that has the background in the DBE program and or outreach component 
will be named um, as to ensure that the subcontracting plan is properly executed. We also have uh, early on, we're going to look at commitments um, and uh, areas of work that are going to be identified for DBEs and small businesses and so forth. Um, another example would be a requirement for quarterly strategy meetings where Sandag and the CMGC firm or joint venture will work together to ensure that we maximize those opportunities for small businesses and DBE firms. So why a subcontracting plan? As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the subcontracting opportunities are unknown at the time of award. John showed you the CMGC process and how that timeline would work. One of the requirements is going to be that we have a plan that is uh, developed after award, after selection, and is negotiated and worked uh, collaboratively so that we have an approved plan once we hit uh, the ground going forward on the construction phase. So in summary, uh, we have uh, various UDB goals. We've got uh, opportunities for all of you over several years. Uh, and then we have, I believe, a very comprehensive and proactive DBE program that has been uh, implemented. We're moving forward with a, a strategic plan to really emphasize a lot of these different areas. And then lastly, that subcontracting plan will be a key element of the overall DBE program. I'd like to do is just quickly talk to you about the DBE certification topics here. Um, the objectives of the DBE program, the eligibility requirements, and benefits. I'm going to keep it at a very high level, but like everyone else today, we're available to talk to you after today's presentation. So, why, are we, why do we have a DBE program? I started to tell you at the very beginning of my presentation a little bit about the DBE program, but the bottom line is that it deals with three main areas. Non-discrimination, leveling the playing field, and assisting small businesses. Now, how do you become eligible to become a DBE certified firm? Let me tell you something. This is the golden ticket today here in California, more specifically here in Southern California. Sandag has a significant number of construction projects in play right now. Now, I was at a small business council meeting a couple of months ago, back in October, and, and I heard Caltrans get up and say, listen, this is second highest number of dollars we've ever spent on construction ever since the existence of Caltrans in Southern California, second highest. We've got some huge projects, mega projects. This is a mega project in the DOT's eyes. There's a few of these like this here in, this, in the region. So this is a really good opportunity to, to look at becoming a DBE certified firm if you are eligible. So what are we talking about? Ownership you re requirement is 51% or more of the ownership has to come through a socially and economically disadvantaged individual. To break it down, it's those six groups we talked about. Uh, if you, are all, you own one or more individuals, so for example, you and your partner could own together maybe 60%, 30% each, and the other 40% could be owned by a, a person that is not qualified as a socially and economically disadvantaged individual, then that would work. Owner must control management and daily operations. So really, it can't be a sham, it can't be a front. You need to actually do the work. You need to deal with the day-to-day -day operations. Um, for-profit business. It cannot be a non-profit. It has to be a for-profit business. And you know, I wish I had this problem, but over the last three years, you can't make more than $22.41 million, right? Average. So, um, and then lastly, personal net worth cannot exceed $1.3 million, and that excludes your principal residence and the value of your business. Now, why would you want to become a DBE certified firm? I just told you earlier, but a couple of other reasons is that you have a greater chance of being awarded. Trust me, if I'm a prime contractor and I know that I have to go out and fulfill either my good faith effort or meet or exceed a DBE goal, I'm going to be looking for DBE firms first. Secondly, that database serves as a great marketing tool. I know that I've been, I, I receive emails as a result of being a DBE firm, but at Sandag, we provide Elaine with a list of all the DBE firms that we believe are included under various NAICS codes 
when we develop a goal. So the first thing that Sandag will do is provide that list to the potential prime contractors. So again, you're going to be a great opportunity to market yourself. And, and then also you can bid as a DBE firm on all DOT contracts. And then lastly, you can participate in free business development. Now, GCAP is currently the DBE supportive services contractor for Caltrans. Caltrans is going to come out next, uh, I'm going to say probably April, May of next year with a, another DBE supportive services contract where they pr provide free to, to any potential DBE or DBE firm free business development services. What does that mean? It means free one-on-one -on -one consulting with experts, free workshops, free um, uh, technical assistance, and so forth. So these are all excellent reasons to become a DBE certified firm. Okay, now, what, how do you do that? Well, there's certain certifying agencies that are out there. Unfortunately, here in Southern California, today, there's only Los Angeles Metropolitan Transit Authority, or Metro, LA Metro, the City of Los Angeles, and Caltrans. Those are the only three certifying agencies in the region. And, uh, but in addition to those three certifying agencies, there are other agencies or organizations that can help you with your certification process. And those include the Small Business Development Centers, the San Diego Contracting Opportunity Center, and a DB Supported Services Program like the one we're managing. <coughs> okay, so here's my recommendation is we have on the website, we have the ability for you to register on the Mid Coast Project. In addition to that, when, once you get in, it's very straightforward. Any of you that have registered in other sites, you, you can follow a bouncing ball here. It's a very straightforward process, but it's important because you're going to be able, as a result of registering, you're going to be able to get new information, updates, and so forth. And we'll also be providing that list over to the uh, CMGC once they win the work. Um, we have a list of all the trade-specific opportunities we believe are going to be available to DBEs and other su su uh, subcontractors. And there, I counted these last night, there are over 100 areas of work that we're looking at for that um, trade opportunities. Quickly, a lot of stuff going on. Generally, what I really want to say on this slide is that this is a comprehensive program.